35 millimeters is my favorite focal length. For as long as I've been taking photos, I've narrowed it down to these two 35mm lenses, which ironically are the two most common ones that Sony offers at drastically different price points. The 35mm 1.4 G Master and the 35mm 1.8. Now I spent a lot of time last year bouncing back and forth between these two lenses trying to figure out which one I liked the most. As you can tell, I still own both of them and I don't plan on selling either of them, but I've already made up my mind on which one I prefer, but we will get to that later. So first, let's go over the biggest factor for probably a lot of people trying to decide between these lenses, and that is the price point. The G Master costs almost double what the 1.8 does. Of course, that can vary greatly depending on if you're buying new or used. If you're buying used, I found the 35 1.8 as low as $450, so that's almost three times cheaper than the G Master. But I've also seen the G Master used for sale for as low as $1,000 or $1,100 before, although that's a bit more rare. So I bought the G Master new for around $1,300, closer to $1,400 after tax, but I managed to pick up the 35 1.8 for under $500. Now, I'm mentioning used prices because I prefer to buy my lenses used as long as they're in good condition, and if you're not too concerned about the warranty, I think it's generally the better way to go. So in my opinion, one could argue that if you can find the 35mm 1.8 for as low as $500, but the G Master is as much as $1,300, maybe a little cheaper used, you could buy the $500 35 1.8 model and then still have plenty of money left over that you could buy another lens with. Or just save money. But of course, that decision might come down to some other factors, so let's move on to the next one. The difference between the size of these two lenses is obviously very, very noticeable. And it's also the main reason I considered picking up the 1.8 in the first place. The difference between the two is quite noticeable, especially once you've got the lens actually on your camera. I think if you're the kind of person that likes to carry your camera around with you everywhere you go, the 1.8 makes a lot more sense. But then you could argue if you want to go with a 35mm lens that is even smaller, but then you're sacrificing that 1.8 aperture. The G Master makes a lot of sense for people that are maybe shooting weddings or taking their camera and their lens out to do a very specific shoot where you're working on some kind of set, which happened to be my case for a while when I was primarily just taking my camera out when I'm doing shoots with models. Then I gradually moved over to carrying my camera with me more and more. So what it really comes down to is, do you want to sacrifice the size of the 1.8 for the G Master, when the only real trade-off is the aperture ring and that extra 0.4 stops on the aperture, which allows in a little bit more light and a little bit more depth of field for the background. But let's dig a little deeper and compare the two and see if it's really worth it. So I'm going to come out and say it. I believe if you're buying this lens just for that 0.4 stop difference in terms of light coming in and the additional background blur, it's not really worth it. I think it's a dumb reason and a larger aperture alone does not make a lens better. What does make a lens better is the true optical quality. And the G Master does live up to its price point. The 1.8 is not quite as sharp, but I do believe it also lives up to its price point as well coming in at half the cost. When comparing image quality, the G Master is better, dare I say almost perfect. Especially when wide open, the G Master is sharp even at f1.4, and you will notice that right off the bat after shooting with it just once. The f1.8 is still very, very sharp. If you're shooting wide open, especially portraits, it's still going to look fantastic, but you really need to stop it down to about f2.8 to f4 to really see just how sharp this lens is. One thing I did notice is that the G Master looks like it's almost 2mm wider than the 35 1.8. I did not move the tripod in between shooting with the lenses, so that's just something to take note of that actually surprised me quite a lot. The one problem that I have noticed that the 1.8 does really truly suffer from, that is chromatic aberration. Of course, as you stop down to f2.8 and f4, the chromatic aberration becomes less and less noticeable, but it can be very, very noticeable at f1.8.
So comparing the two, the G Master clearly wins, but I don't think that makes the 1.8 a bad lens. So my conclusion is that both lenses are fantastic, and either way I don't think you will be disappointed. If you can afford to shell out the 13-1400 for the G Master, I don't think you will regret it. And the same goes for the f1.8. If you want the best image quality, the G Master is the winner, no doubt about it. So now that we've come full circle, let's talk about why I chose to go with the f1.8 lens as my primary photography lens. If you've been watching my previous videos, you will know that this comes at no surprise because I've been using the 1.8 for a long time now. The image quality from this lens is still more than good enough, and I found myself bouncing back and forth between the two lenses for one reason only, and that was the aperture ring. Especially since the a7c is my primary photo camera and there is no front dial, having an aperture ring is wildly convenient, but that will probably soon change with the new a7c's coming out. But if Sony ever decides to release a 35 1.8G lens that does have an aperture ring, I'll probably buy one day one. But in the meantime, I'm happy with this. And the reason I still have both of these lenses is pretty simple. I still use the G Master to film most of my talking head videos. And my wife is also a photographer, so always having a 35mm lens available to use is pretty convenient. In the end, I think the 1.8 is a better value, because for the price of the G Master, you could buy another lens as well, or just simply save your money. So before we end this video, I just want to make it clear there are so many 35mm lenses out there that are amazing and fantastic. I chose to make this video because these are the two primary 35mm lenses that Sony offers. If you want a 35mm lens that is cheap and also offers a 1.8 aperture, you can pick up the Samyang for like $300. And of course, we can't forget Sigma because they do offer a 35mm 1.4 lens for around the same price as the Sony 35 1.8. So anyone considering the G Master, you should definitely consider checking out the Sigma as well. And the final lens that I would consider everyone checking out, especially if you shoot street photography or if you want a good everyday 35mm lens, that is the Sigma 35mm f2. It's slightly smaller than the f1.8, and the difference between f1.8 and f2 really is not that big of a deal. So strongly consider checking out that lens as well. So I tried to balance this video out with my opinions on the lenses, but also the facts regarding these lenses. So let me know if you have any thoughts in the comments or any questions, I will be happy to answer them. So if you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to help support me so I can continue growing and reaching a larger audience. And I hope I could inspire you guys to get out and take more photos. Go on, shoot.